Hello, CWC family and friends. We are so honored to connect with you today, streaming straight from our home to yours on our church campus here in Riverview, Florida. We have two resources available today designed specifically for our virtual service. Number one, click on the link in the description below for today's message guide. We've also set up an incredible worship playlist right here on our YouTube channel so that you and your family can worship together. So now, let's open our hearts and receive today's word. Hello, I'm John Quigley, pastor of the Community Worship Center here at Riverview, Florida. And I'd like to welcome you to this installment of our broadcast ministry. We're calling it CWC Delivered for right now, so we want you to enjoy that. But in this segment, I want to talk to you about some things that I really feel like the Lord has laid on my heart for today in particular. I want to draw your attention to some patterns and some practices that God reveals to us throughout Scripture that we need to understand today. I want to look into the Word of God and I want to, I want to draw from it what should become our awareness of what He's up to in this very moment. We're going to go to Revelation chapter 3, verse 20 in just a moment. Also, Song of Solomon chapter 5, verse 2. So you can go ahead and turn there if you would like. But we want to ask the Lord today to speak to our heart, reveal His purpose, His intent, and allow us to walk in sync with the, with the Spirit Himself. If you'll join me in that, let's trust and pray and believe that together. Amen? All right. I want to talk today uh, about a, a message that I've entitled, That Sound is the Lord. And what I've noticed about the moment that we're dwelling in is that in this particular setting, we have found ourselves in a unique environment. And what I noticed about this, as I noted it about 9-11, is that there is a reaction continuum that we operate in. And I want to talk about that for just a moment. This reaction continuum exists when we are subject to sudden, startling scary issues that come our way, as in 9-11 or this pandemic. And what I've noticed is that first, we have a tendency to be alarmed. And in that alarm, we are, there's a great deal of uncertainty. We are scrambling, trying to find some solid ground to stand on. We are looking for something under which to take shelter that we might have peace in the midst of all of this pain and problem. And then the longer that we're there, I notice that we move from alarm to adjustment. And what we do in that adjustment is that we learn the, the, the parameters of our border, so to speak, and we begin to live within the framework of this new understanding. In that adjustment, what happens many times is that we move into acceptance. We recognize the unavoidable realities of this matter, and we remain uh, in that setting with less fear and more confidence than we had when we first entered into it. And then, sadly, what I've noticed, this was noted by many uh, in the aftermath of the event in, 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 on 9-11, is that in those first couple of weeks, just after the event, churches were loaded, churches were full, people were seeking the Lord. And then after time, they began to just winnow away, and pretty soon there was not the same level of intensity about the matter. So in this continuum, we move from alarm to adjustment, from adjustment to acceptance, and then unfortunately, we oftentimes move from acceptance into apathy. I don't want you to move into apathy in this moment. I want you to stay in this place of alarm because it's there that you're aware of what's occurring and you are being very careful about the decisions you make, the thoughts you think, and the places you go and, 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 and what you allow yourself to be involved in. I want you to maintain that framework as we look today at the things that I believe the Lord is speaking to us in this hour. There's an indication that God is at the door. We see that in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. There is a pres presentation of his present posture, and that is that he is on the other side of a, a, of a door or a gate that you and I have power over, and he's there invite, asking you to recognize his presence, to open to his uh, entrance, and by allowance, allow him to come into you and I and, and take up residence within our habitation that we might have the peace that comes from his presence. 
in the Song of Solomon, it goes on and, and, and says very similar words, but reveals to us the intimacy of the intent of the one who's doing the knocking and the calling. And it says, I sleep, but my heart is awake. It is the voice of my beloved. He knocks saying, open for me. And I believe that the indication of where we are today is, is relevant to this because I believe that Jesus is desiring access into our heart and our home and, and into our thinking so that in this moment we don't miss his presence. When it talks about a knock, a knock is, a, is an alert. It is, a, it is an alert that someone is at your house or at your room or in your habitation, near your habitation, and their desire is to have an audience with your attention. Can I say that again? The reason God is, knock, is knocking is because he desires to have a, 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 an audience with your attention. Our current environment is likely a number of things, uh, but it is most definitely, most assuredly, the knock of God at the door of your heart. It is a divine noise. Do you hear me? A divine noise sounding the presence of the Lord himself as he desires to make entrance into your present setting. And while they're reminding us to not lose sight of his coming. Can I say that again? Listen to me. God is knocking on your heart's door in this moment, reminding you he's there, offering himself to be your source of peace. But not only is this moment being uh, exercised by the Lord to draw attention to his close proximity for your peace, it's also a significant reminder that the Lord is coming. This knocking, this sound is the Lord. And God is utilizing this moment for our benefit. A knock is something that you take notice of, especially if it comes in the middle of the night. If I hear you knocking through the day, it's one thing. I may lay aside, but if I hear you knock in the middle of the night, I'm suddenly awakened. It has all of my interest. Every bit of my energy is going to be focused on trying to understand why that knock came, who is the one who is doing the knocking, and what should my next step be. I don't believe in this moment that we need to settle for anything less than those simple standards. These things are happening because there is something happening. Amen. I, I know that sounds uh, 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 so over the top, uh, 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 rich and real, but let me just say it again in its simplicity. These things are happening because the promised return of the Lord is happening. Do you follow me? These things are coming about because Jesus is coming. Amen. These things are not random happenstance occurring simply by whimsical notion. These things are the intention of God utilized for the purpose of drawing our attention to the reality that everything he's ever declared about his return is happening and it's happening in our lifetime. The Lord never does anything gratuitously but rather intentionally, with the purpose of gracious preparation and merciful readiness. If you need to rewind and hear that again, please do so. God telegraphs his move. He, he broadcasts his upcoming activities for our benefit and awareness. And this uh, superimposed digital uh, age uh, moment where we're in, we take great pride or great, uh, we take great effort to make certain that the people of our church and the people who are interested in hearing these broadcasts are aware of wh what's coming, when it's going to happen. If we do that on an earthly basis, how much more does God do it on a, on a, on a divine basis? God is telegraphing himself. He is, he is broadcasting his upcoming activities for our benefit and for our awareness. It is all for the sake of repentance and readiness. The heart of God is not to bring judgment. The heart of God is to bring forgiveness. And God does what he does when he does what he does in order to bring us to a place of repentance and readiness. Why? Because there is an occurrence that's going to take place after this now. And it's already been laid out in scripture for us to recognize and understand. The his knock, this indication of what he's doing is in fact that it is a divine indication that he is near and that he desires personal and private interaction. He wants to have communion with you and I, uh, you and I having communion with him, if you will, in our heart and in our home. What you're hearing right now 
It's not just the normal noise of life in general, but it is an intense invitation. It is an intense invitation to give special attention to the presence of the Lord, who is in fact, uh, along with all of these other activities, causing us to come to a place that we might pause in the midst of it all and might make ourselves attuned to his arrival in that moment. That knock signifies he's on the other side desiring to come in. Everything in the world is and has been gearing up for the Lord's last day layout. Do you follow? Before he came the first time, everything that was written prior to his arrival was pointing to the fact that he was going to come as the Messiah sent of God, the, 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 the divine substitute for your sin and mine, our Savior. All of that was recorded and predicted and, and spoken of before it occurred. But I want us to grasp and understand that since he left last, the next natural anticipation is his return. And we, the presence of this pandemic and all of these other signs that are occurring around the world, uh, locusts in Africa and drought in Australia, uh, and we could go on, the seismic activity occurring uh, almost uh, uh, simultaneous uh, in, a, in a chain of continued events regularly around the world, unnoted and unknown by those who don't, aren't aware of it. All of these are an indication that those things that Jesus himself declared were, that were going to occur prior to his return, these things are beginning to occur and we are witnessing them with our very own eyes. What we need to realize today is that we are gatekeepers. There are gatekeepers that are pastors and, 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 and there are, they are tasked with particular responsibilities. But then you and I are gatekeepers and that's validated in Romans or Revelations chapter 3. That, that he is standing at the door. So the implication is it's our door and we have the power to open that door or allow it to remain shut and therefore not allow the entrance of the Lord into our setting. You and I are gatekeepers and there's a responsibility that comes with that role. And part of the responsibility as a gatekeeper is that we be awake, that we be watching, that we be vigilant, that we be sober, that we be diligent, that we be praying, that we be declaring. But above all of those, or, or at least in line with all of those, part of the responsibility of the gatekeeper is to be listening for the knock of the Lord at the door of our lives. Here's what I know about God. God uses big noises to grab our attention. Can I say that again? God uses big noises to grab our attention. I want to challenge you, do not let the knocking sound that you presently hear become white noise in your life so to, so to the degree that you are not any longer listening to God, that, that you've moved from alarm into apathy. Don't let it become white noise. Awake and arise and accept the Lord into your heart and your home because the indication that we receive from the sounds that we are hearing is that the Lord is ready to come in. The Lord is ready to make himself available. The Lord is willing to come in into a relationship with you that is far greater than religious facts. It is personal relationship. God wants you to walk with him and he wants to walk with you. Now, there's a word that continues to bombard my spirit. And that is, the, that is the word incubation. Now, <laughs> incubation is not a word that you are going to utilize in normal conversation on a daily basis, unless possible you work in the medical field. So when this sound began to be heard in my hearing, I wanted to pay particular close attention. And I believe that the Lord is drawing us to this because the, the aspect of incubation is because the Lord is seeking inhabitation incubation because God wants inhabitation and that this moment is not simply a season of being shut away apart from each other and other things but it is about being intentionally sheltered hear me now it's about being intentionally sheltered in a divine environment for the sake of spiritual development and personal readiness what is incubation incubation these are just my definitions as I've sensed them relative to what God is speaking. Incubation is an intentional introduction into a created environment for the sake of future life through 
present preparation and attention to adjustment and revealed need. You may really simply have to rewind to get that all again because there's a lot there. God has purposely put us into a place that we can be being prepared, that we can give attention to the adjustments necessary by the Spirit of God and that He might speak to us about revealed need in our life and in our walk with Him. Incubation is also a uh, 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 how I would define it in, in reference to this, a short-term ecosystem intended to sustain life while stimulating health until strength is gained or developed over time that allows for stability and security. That sounds like God to me, that his desire would for you, for you and for, uh, for me to be healthy, whole, sound, entire, complete, and lacking nothing. Amen? I believe that incubation is a it is an isolated or separate place that allows for the lack of maturity. A, a child that's placed into incubation has usually arrived in this world premature of his normal ingestation period. So it is an isolated and separate place that allows for any lack of maturity to be nurtured and to be overcome. Wow. Why? Again, so that life can be seized from the jaws of death and that we don't have to die here unprepared and undeveloped and unhealthy. Incubation is an alternative to taking your chances on the level of your present quality of life. Listen, this incubation that God has placed us in, and that's what I sense the Spirit of the Lord helping us to, to understand or wanting us to understand, giving us opportunity to grasp it. This incubation is, 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 is occurring because there's a need. This incubation is occurring because there is weakness in the body of Christ. God is divinely bringing us to this moment because of our need. Do you hear me today? Our hearts, let me talk about the body of Christ and where we are with regard to our health today and why we need this incubation. Because first and foremost, our hearts are not beating properly. Our hearts are not beating properly. We are not loving the Lord or the lost or maybe even others for that matter. We live in such a hate-driven, divided world right now. And the love of God can be that peacemaker and that bridge builder. But we're not operating in love. We're operating out of a sense of defensiveness and desire to let our opinion be known. We no longer are allowing our heart to beat in sync with God. We are in the incubator today because our hearts are not beating properly. Secondly, we're in the incubator today because our lungs are not developed fully. What do you mean, Pastor? There is no strong sound of our pronounced voices crying out from the highways and byways and declaring aloud the call of God, not only to the sinner, but to the prodigal and to the saint who may have grown cold and their walk with God. We're in the incubator today because there's no, there's nothing filling our lungs and adding amplification to our voice because we're willing to sit idly by, silent on the sideline and allow others to do work we refuse to put our hand to the plow on. We are in the incubator today, not only because our heart is not beating, not only because our lungs aren't developed, but we're in there today because our health needs attention. Our spiritual health needs divine intervention. We're in the incubator today because we need to be elevated out of a place of low quality of life into a higher quality of life, living a life that is led by the Spirit of God and the person of Christ. If we are able to ever be able to stand in the hours that are to come upon us, and there are hours coming upon us, even in the body of Christ and in the church, it is then that, that, that we need to let our light and life shine to the glory of God. But if our health is so weak that we cannot do that, then we need this divine incubation to raise up the quality of our life so that we with health might move forward into the things of God as, as, as anointed and authoritative and authentic representations of who God is in this world today. Throughout Scripture, there are multiple occasions of God using separation for incubation that leads to inhabitation of his plans for what comes next. I'm not preaching here today, but I want to talk in days to come about God's next 
God never does something without preparation. What he does today is laying a foundation for what he's going to do next. When he spoke life to the universe and he began to direct the affairs of the earth, he created on day one what day two would need. He created on day two what day three would need. The pattern of God, the the, 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 the practice of God is to always offer a foundation before he builds on it. And what God is doing in this matter, is God is using the separation of incubation to create habitation because there's something he's about to do. Do you hear me today? We see it when Noah and his crew were put in the ark and, and God divinely closed the door and sealed its seams with pitch. It offered to them the opportunity to know that God was covering them. When the children of Israel were locked behind closed doors during that first Passover and invited to, to, to swath the blood across their doorpost, it was, it was a locking away by God to secure the, and preserve them in preparation for what God was going to do through them and for them. We look and we see in the story of Rahab, a woman who, who is covered by a covenant because she received the men of God and by faith she allowed them to, to go about their business and God honored her and the request and the, and, the, and the directions given to this woman of faith is that if you can get you and your family and anybody else who will hear you behind the door of your quarters and you rest in there behind the uh, scarlet line, I assure you that when everything else falls apart, you and your crew will still be found standing. God often uses this, this, this divine shutting away, this tucking away, this sheltering in for our benefit. He is, he is bringing us to a place that we are separate unto Him, that we are hearing His voice, that we are obeying His direction, and we are allowing ourselves to not have any other competition with the conversation that God wants to have with our spirit. In Isaiah 26, verse 20, a passage of Scripture that's become popular across social medias in the last couple of days, simply says, Come, my people, enter your chambers and shut your door behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation is passed. That's out of the New King James Version. And in this passage, the Lord gives hope to His children that soon these things will pass, that, that, that their enemies would be defeated, and that His blessings would be realized in their lifetime. He utilized this practice of sheltering in, of separation, of shutting away as a way of protecting his people and promoting his plan for their future advancement. All the while, God in the forefront, bringing us, delivering us, directing us into those designs that he has for us and the destinies that are ours to lay hold of. He often isolates and insulates in order to incubate to create a controlled environment where our hearts and minds and all else is being nurtured to receive health. And it serves as a point of recognition that this moment is a moment of divine preparation for the life that is to follow. In a real life situation, I want you to understand this. Neither the baby nor the parents demand incubation. The physician attending to the health of the patient, makes the call based on the need. God's plan involves separation for preparation. His plan is incubation for inhabitation. That's what he's done in the past. That's what he's doing today. This is no different than then. The current challenge for you and I is that we not waste the hours that we're given simply sitting in our home, just letting this time uh, 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 exist for naught. We need to let this time be utilized for that incubation. Your elongated exposure to the prospect of new and continued growth and development. I challenge you to spend the currency of this time wisely. I challenge you to redig the wells of your most satisfying sources of life. Find again that fellowship with God and with family. Find and, 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 and rediscover, make a fresh dive into the Word of God. Rediscover the depths of prayer that maybe has been avoided and, 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 and unutilized of late. And while you're there, reclaim, reclaim rather, the, 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 the delight of worship. In this place of incubation, be led of the Spirit. That means listen to His voice. Listen for the sound of His knock. 
But in all of those things, allow this moment to cultivate spiritual health, to prepare your heart for the acceptance of the elements that are part of God's plan, that even though we may not understand them, we trust God in them. We need to, in this moment, let the Spirit of God strengthen us into a strong stance so that in the coming days of adversity, listen to me, our faith will not fail. Incubation is a miracle occurrence. Often unable to be witnessed simply and solely by our eyes alone. The transformation is gradual, seen really in the vitality of the results. The outcome as it reveals new levels of acquired health. That's where you see the power of incubation. Often we're unable to witness the magnitude of transformation while it's occurring because it's occurring incrementally over time and the naked eye, the untrained eye, can't necessarily see it in its observation. It has to be witnessed in the verifiable facts that relate that health is being grabbed and gained. Do you understand what I'm saying? The, the reality is, is that there is a result of this incubation and the outcome of that incubation is that it reveals new levels of acquired health. Hearts become stronger, lungs become more capable, brains have more time to develop. Our minds are now working in ways that they should but could not have worked if they had not been incubated. This incubation is not always immediately observable, but over time, the effects of that will be known as we continue to walk them out in our life. Let this time, this time of incubation, this moment that we're in, the, the, the shelter in, the safe and home uh, 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 framework of, of how various communities are operating in this time of the unknown and the unexpected. Let this be a time of inspection. Allow the Lord, the psalm writer said, search me, O Lord, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Let this time be a time of inspection, both from the Holy Spirit and from yourself. Let it be a time where you take inventory and ask yourself some very difficult questions about what you are doing with what God has enabled you to do. Are you living up to those elements of God's call and burden on your life? Let it be a, a time of the introduction of new or possibly renewed practices in your life. Maybe they've gone the way, to the wayside. They, they've gone and, and, and they're just no longer a regular part of your life. Why don't you find them again? Why don't, why, don't, why don't you introduce yourself yet again back into these productive practices? Let this be a time of rest. I know that many of you are, are, are running to and fro, and the weariness of your soul has caused you to lay aside the weight of things that require deep attention. And it could be that God is using this moment to bring you rest. Rest is something we have a difficulty uh, in achieving because we usually don't do so without a, a, an accompanying amount of guilt. I'm telling you today, rest while you have the opportunity. Let this be a season of recuperation. Let it be a time where you reflect upon what God is, has done, is doing, and will do. Let it be a point of recovery for your heart and your mind. Let it be a place where, where you reclaim maybe some things that you have uh, uh, purposely laid aside in order to meet the demands of your present, current life. Let it be a time of reset. Let it be a time of reset. I want to give you a cueism right here. I, I, I want to challenge you to reboot your hardware. Amen? Do you hear me? You need to reboot your hardware. Because if you are exposing yourself to news and social media and this, that, and another thing on a regular basis, there is a great divide occurring in our nation, and it's affecting people in the house of God. I'm asking you today to, to go back and allow the Lord to reboot your heartware and give you a heart for God, a heart for your neighbors, and a heart for yourself that is intended. I want you to take this time and enjoy your moments with your family, Embrace these opportunities, engage what you need to, energize your hope so that today and tomorrow you are living in a at a level of expectancy from the good hand of God. Amen. Here's what I want to say. Don't waste your time and worry. Don't waste your time and worry. Serve in this season through strength and grow forth from your chamber into the joy of what God has next for you. And he has a next for you. I am assured of that. Because... In all of these things, 
it's here that we, we see the invitation of God begin to emerge. I shared before that in that reaction continuum, we may start out in alarm, but we may end up in apathy. And if we're not careful, we, we may at the knock of God miss the simultaneous invitation of God that is offered coinciding with His presence on the other side of the door. Amen. I, here's what we need to realize. In this moment, God is giving grace, a period of acceptance and receptivity to the activity of the Spirit working to draw us near to Him. Do you hear me today? The prophet Isaiah said in his day, Isaiah 55, 6, Seek the Lord while He is near, while He can be found. Call upon Him while He is near. We'll talk about while maybe in another day, but, but to me it, it immediately confers the understanding and, and, and imposes upon my awareness that this is not something that is elongated eternally, that we need to seize the moment while it's available to us. He, he, he says, seek the Lord while He may be found. And, and I believe that we can add to that without taking away from that, that we also need to listen to the Lord while He's speaking. We need to open to Him while He's knocking. We need to welcome Him while He's here. We need to accommodate Him as He seeks to come in. We need to feed with him feed him and we need to be fed of him and if we will do these things we will be taking the most advantageous posture in relationship to this moment and it will afford to us something we could never gain on our own jesus said behold i am knocking my paraphrase here here's what he's saying i'm seeking your permission to come into you that you may have fellowship with me oh listen if we remember jesus uh, throughout the gospel here he is at the at the height of the feast and he stands up in the middle and he says unto them come unto me all ye who labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest there he says come to me but in revelations he's coming to you he's making it personal he's showing up and arriving right where you're at in the middle of your situation Situation. He is knocking on the door desiring entrance into your life. Jesus, by His knock, is making His presence known. He is knocking so as to gain your attention, to draw you and I away from other activities of lesser importance and value that we may seize the moment that now is and give Him full entrance and full access to our home, that, that, that inhabitation during an incubation, and also to our heart that in His presence we might have peace. That sound, that loud invasive noise that's now drawing your attention, alerting you to the fact that someone is trying to make their entrance into your setting, that is the Lord. Do you hear me today? That sound is the Lord. He is calling out to those who have ears to hear and will respond in the affirmative to His call. He is seeking you out. Listen to me. Jesus, oh my. Jesus is going door to door, knocking on everyone He finds. He is not going door to door to sell. He is not going door to door for a sale. He is going door to door to save those who will open and answer to Him in this moment. He's not there to sell. He's there to save. He is bearing the gift of peace that comes from His presence and He brings with Him the bread of life that we might partake and we might have fellowship with him in closing today let me declare this truth in a world of bad news the word of God is still the good news do you hear me in a world of bad news the word of God is still the good news he is trying to alert us to his presence and his return he is knocking now so that we will let Him in this minute. He is seeking to be let into your heart and to your home, to be your hope and to be your health. And the question that I have is this, will you respond, open your door, gatekeeper, and will you let Him in? Listen to what the psalm writer says about the one who's knocking. In Psalm 24, 7 through it says, lift up your heads, O you gates, and lift 
and be lifted up, you everlasting doors. Listen, he's saying, don't remain closed. Don't remain locked. Don't remain shut. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors. When you do these things, listen, the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? It is the Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Verse 9, lift up your heads, O you gates. Again, uh, an explanation of opening the door, lifting the gate, giving full access to God. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? Verse 10. He is the Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. He is the Prince of peace. He is the Son of God. He is the Savior of all mankind. He is everything that you and I will ever need. I say today, while He knocks, will you go? Will you answer? Will you let Him in? Will you allow Him to bring to you what only He can give to you today. The heart of this pastor, gatekeeper, shepherd is that you not miss your moment. My heart is that you do seize this season and you see the need to answer the door and that you decide to open that door and let him in. The consequences of a heart that was at first alarmed but has moved into apathy is too costly a price to pay. Don't miss your moment. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord, it's as simple as asking Him to come into your heart. Lord, I've heard your word, I believe, and I want you to save me, and He will. If you're the prodigal, just be reminded that the Lord is waiting and watching. And there's room in his house and celebration about to begin. You, you will uncap celebration when you return. And if you're a saint saved today and walking with the Lord, keep up the walk. Don't get lost in the mundane of day-to-day -day marching. But let your momentum come from the hope that is set before you. Heaven is our home, not this earth. Father, I pray today, touch every heart and every life. Let the clarion quality call of the Spirit be heard in the ears of those who will hear. And let there today, God, be found the confidence and the courage, the humility and the help to open that door to you this morning. God, we ask you to touch every heart and every life in a very powerful and a profound way. And we give the Lord all praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. We love you. We're praying for you. We're lifting you up at this time. And we're just believing today for God to bring about His glory in our days. Amen. We hope you've enjoyed this message from CWC Riverview. For more information on this message and other teachings, visit us on cwcriverview.com. If you'd like to support the ministry financially, you may give online from our website as well. We want to know what God is meaning in your life through this ministry. Connect with us for the latest news on our services, events, and more by following us on Facebook and Instagram. God bless you and your family, and we'll see you again very soon.